Um, <clears throat> my name is Mark Shepherd. I'm the founder and director of Family Separation Support. Um, just briefly, my my journey started uh, approximately 11 years ago um, when my first daughter was born. Um, it, 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 it wasn't as bad as it, what it, it sort of gradually moved on to. It wasn't, I wouldn't say it was high conflict to start with. Um, like most cases, it, it, it just starts off as, oh, you can't see your, your, your daughter or your child on a certain day. And then it gradually over time starts escalating um, to not seeing them at all. Um, so I, I quite quickly worked out that the only way forward for me was to have to go to court to sort of get an, a court order or some form of um, legal document to sustain a um, relationship with my daughter at the time. Um, and yeah, it, it was very uh, biased, should I say, 11 years ago uh, towards, towards fathers. So that's how my journey started. I, I started working with other fathers, um, having discussions um, with mothers as well, and then I started, sort of gradually built up a bigger picture that it wasn't um, strictly a father problem. It, it was a uh, person problem. And anyone that got involved with the family court um, was affected by this. It's, it's just, it was as simple as that. And then after that, I decided to uh, start campaigning on my own. And then gradually over the years, built up various organisations and ended up with family separation support. Uh, awesome. You know what I, I like about that? You know, we're uh, we talk about how um, that, you know, over 20 years ago, I got in the work about uh, two and a half decades ago. And I totally got here in the United States that it was just presumed that women should get when the relationship didn't work, when then the children by default went to mom and dads got marginalized and, um, you know, were represented as a paycheck. So, and even then I, I knew there was, there was something wrong here. And I, and I tried to get with other advocates and I noticed back then that the fathers were so were, were uh, clinging together, but they were, um, you know, it, there was just, it became where I felt like I was sort of um, attacked for being a female. And um, so I kept saying, hey, we're on the right, we're on the same team. We're both being, you know, we're all being marginalized here, whether we're, you know, male or female. So anyways, that's why I love the fact that you've taken that stance of, yeah, this happened and we can all come together because it's better to have 100% of this population working for us for, to bring unity for families than 50%. So thank you so much. You know, we're here today to celebrate Father's Day and to support and empower fathers and their families and perhaps suggest some ideas and, and strategies that have worked for us that may work for others. That's kind of why I'm here and I think why we're all here. I love it. I, you know, um, it is, I mean, uh, we can fo focus on, you know, the resigned and discouraged and disempowering conversations, um, or we can focus on and celebrate the, the wins. And the win for you, Todd, is that you got to spend time with your son. Yes. Um, and you're not giving up, up hope on your daughter. Correct. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, how about you, you two, Mar um, Mark and Bill? What's this? Um, how has, uh, ha are you able to celebrate Father's Day um, with your family, with your children? Um, I think over the 11 years, I've only celebrated it twice, mm -hmm. I think, if, mm -hmm. if, if I'm lucky. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, I would love to say I, I would get the uh, opportunity to see my uh, daughters on this day, but unfortunately I don't. Um, I get a card from my eldest daughter, who is 10, um, and she sent me two beautiful cards this weekend. Uh, my youngest, I don't uh, have, uh, unfortunately, any communication with. 
Um, so, no. <laughs> in Not short, it. in short, no, I don't. Unfortunately, I got it. You know, um, and this is a journey for them as well. I mean, them to sort their feelings out. And we were talking about off off air about um, the stages of development for children and. Um, their brains don't fully get completely wired up until they're 26. And if they've gone through, um, and therefore if they're an extension of that, and, and I'll tell you, even in dealing with, um, working with parents, um, with my co-parenting course who are not high conflict, um, there's always a little bit of conflict or or many times, but, um, what was I going to say is, oh, you know, Friends I know who are single parents, a lot of times they get so frustrated. Maybe they don't have a social life other than them and the kids. So in the home is kind of that safe space to vent and say what you want to say, but the parent forgets they're the parent. And when there's not enough money and the child support didn't come in and you don't know how to pay your electric bill, what do you do? You vent it to this safe space. And you forget, wait a minute, what damage am I doing by saying, uh, venting about my ex, um, you know, to my children. And people don't even know that. Um, The other thing is, is I've, how many times have you met a parent who is like, oh, I know I can get one of my children to, to talk to the judge. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 please don't. That is taking taking really bad bait um not realizing the impact of it down the road of creating this you know betrayal this this feeling of betrayal you know in the child of having to uh they may be mad at that parent at that particular time but as the adult we got to say nope there's there's a better way the children cannot be uh, getting on on the witness stand against a parent. There's too many professionals out there that can get get the dirt on the other person if they need to be. Um, what do you think about that? The te- testifying in front of um, a child against a parent, a lot of this this trauma, this childhood trauma. Um, then you know maybe it's a little longer than that. I personally don't think it should ever happen. You should never put a child in that situation. Um, firstly, in, in my eyes, the we shouldn't be going into courts full stop. Okay, courts are not equipped to deal with any kind of parental conflict um, and and parental alienation. It's just not equipped for it. So for me, it's all about early intervention, getting to the parents the children as early as possible um, and, and removing the, the train of thought that going to court is normal, okay? Mm-hmm. To get rid of that, that, that persona of, right, we're, we're separating, the first thing we need to do is go to court, okay? We've got to get a child arrangement order in place because realistically, as adults, you should be able to say, right, the relationship didn't work, okay? We have children. Let's do what's best for the children and spend equal time with both parents. Simple as that. That's how it should be. But unfortunately, one person from either side will take it personally when there's a divorce or a separation. They get angry. Emotions are flaring up. And the first thing they do is, well, if you don't want me, you don't want your kids. And that's the first thing they do. And as soon as they have that thought, the rest is history. You end up straight in court, trying to get court orders and time spent with your child. So for me, it's, and and I would love to say it's about education because educating the the judges doesn't seem to be working for me, okay? Um, And hence why I don't think we should be going to court full stop. And that's why my organization and everyone else's organizations exist because we have to find an alternative solution to court. Court should be last resort, very, very last resort. Well, you know, uh, here in the United States, there's there's a very high profile 
custody battle going on between Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. Yeah. Um, now Brad Pitt had to fight for his 50%. Um, and Angelina Jolie is um, getting her children to those who are willing to like really trying to get them into the voice, the, the judges chambers to, yeah. to, um, to betray their father. Um, and it, it just breaks my heart because, you know, a, a parent should not have to fight for 50%. And I totally get that some parents are just not equipped or interested in exercising their 50%, but they should be given that 50%. Um, if there's no history um, previous to the breakup, um, then, you know, why not 50%? But this this is where it comes to what Bill said, um, false allegations. Mm -hmm. It's so easy. So when there's a separation, it depends on if it's a separation or an actual divorce. If it's a divorce, then everyone tends to go to a legal representative, okay, mm -hmm. to speak about the divorce. And we all know that that gets exaggerated because if you want to have an amicable separation, then you cannot get any legal representatives involved. It's as simple as that. Because as soon as you do, they will go, okay, how much is such and such worth? What assets do they have? They don't care about you as a person. They don't care about the children involved in, in your situation. They're only interested in how long they can string your divorce out for and how much money they can earn from that divorce. And that's the problem. If you cut the money out of the situation, I guarantee you they will resolve your divorce within a month <laughs> or less. Yeah. If you said yeah. to them, right, you're not going to get paid for my divorce. They'll be like, oh, OK, right. So what we'll do then, let's get this resolved right now and then uh, you'll be on your merry way. But as soon as they see that you've got assets or someone owns a property or whatever it may be, it's almost like, great. Right. What you need to do now is we'll throw in a few false allegations and, you know, get a few orders in place. And then that's where the chaos starts. And we have to remove the chaos from the separations. And that's the only way we'll move forward with. Um, stable children, stable environments. It's all that chaotic frustration that comes out, especially if you're the non-resident parent, because every, every move you take will be frustrated by the other side because it means that they can lengthen out the process, which in turn earns more money. It's all money. I mean, the people who are, yeah, you're right. I mean, and, and it's a tactic, it's a bully tactic of I'm going to throw all the mud on the wall uh, and hope that I get a portion of it. And, um, and it's the, you know, there's certain professions in the divorce industry that are, you know, just cleaning up. And then there are other professions that are just, you know, they're, they're trying to bring healing to the families and stuff like that. And they're the ones that, um, you know, if you're, if you're, I call them the good guys, if you're a good guy, and it doesn't really matter what your profession is in family advocacy, if you're, you know, fighting for the unity of the family and healing and stuff like that, we're all about how can we support you? Because, you know, we need more of that. We need less uh, people making money off the destruction of our families. 100%. Um, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more, Mark, about, uh, you know, the the uh, misguided notion that it, it's all about educating um, attorneys and educating judges. And, and uh, it you know, it's it reminds me I'm full of quotes today, I guess, but it, it, <laughs> Upton Sinclair once said he said it's very, very difficult to get someone to understand something when their livelihood depends on them not understanding. <laughs> It's true. And, uh, you know, I mean, you're, uh, they know full well what they're doing. And in most yeah, exactly. Cases. And, and exactly. they realize, even, even the good guys know, and they yeah. say, see, this is what's going on. <laughs> the, funny, the funny thing is, because um, on LinkedIn, I deliberately connect myself with a lot of law firms, okay? And there's a reason for that, because I want them to not only see the posts and the information that I put out, but 
to see how their actual law firms progress, especially with family law firms. And it's quite interesting to see how many offices they can open up over a period of time based on the money they receive from families' separations. Yeah. Um, and, and that for me, it, it, I, I wouldn't like to say it's immoral, but I'm not saying every particular law firm is like that. There's going to be good people and bad people in each one. Okay. But for me, it's the growth of the law firms, which is just extraordinary that you could think that from some the pain of someone else the distress of someone else you can continue such large growth in the family law arena um it's that's why i, I i'm not saying that they should all be made redundant but what i'm saying is we need to find an alternative solution that's you know one Mark, one, one factoid <laughs> that, uh, and this is, you know, take, kind of extrapolating quite a bit, but in, in our cir there's circuit courts in, in uh, the U.S. and um, in our, one of our state circuit courts, um, and this information is available probably across the nation, but I know this for a fact that there are three times as many, uh, or there are twice as many family court open and reopen cases as there are civil cases, and there's three times as many as there are criminal cases. I mean, family court clearly pays the bills. And that's what oh. we're up against. <laughs> oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. And this is why we are. This is why we exist. It's people like us that will make that change. It may not happen overnight, but it will happen. And, yeah. and, and as soon as we can take that power away from the family court and bring it back to the people that actually want real services and real support and not to be financially broken because of it, that's what we're aiming for. And that's why we exist. Here, here. <laughs> that's right. That is right. Um, and on that note, I would also say that, um, you know, we have to, we have to figure out which, um, which tiger are we feeding? Um, <laughs> we've got to, to got to uh, feed the tiger that's making it, that's making a difference and, yeah. uh, and come yeah. and be together. You know, when you think about a bully, a bully in school, um, a lot of times it takes a uh, people, a group of people to unite to stand up against that one bully because uh, one to one, the bully wins. Um, so we've got to have a righteous fight and we, it's okay to have righteous anger. Um, and just, you know, we can't be filled with, you know, uh, resignation and, and, uh, and, and, fury you know being furious about something we need to have like righteous anger to channel this for the best interest of the families and um i know that i'm i follow several groups on social media and um you know there's just so much i would say to people out there that if you be careful of the groups that you go into that are not moderated um that are all about chewing on the the evilness of another of of anything anything else a person or or an organization because that's that's resignation in disguise that is saying i'm just going to vent about it and and sit in this sewage because i can't do anything about it but like you know that's why i'm all i'm all about getting in get get yourself a coach get yourself a conflict coach, divorce coach, divorce, you know, custody coach, whatever you want to call them, but they are just like a sports coach, a coach. They're not going to tell you, they're not going to soothe you and validate you, your, your unhealthy thinking. They're going to make you stronger. And sometimes they're going to tell you what you don't want to hear. Um, so if you're in these plugged in these groups that are just Just sitting in the sewage, get out. No, hundred percent. I could not agree with that. Well, I've had to myself remove myself from many of them um, because they they were becoming quite unhealthy. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 also for me, um, we're we're going to be leading some groundbreaking work in terms of having evidence based work. I don't believe in opinion. I really don't. I like everything to be backed with evidence. And that's probably because of my background. But 
at the same time, if you don't have evidence to prove or disapprove something, then it's worthless to me. And that is why my organization will be structured top to bottom evidence-based work and evidence-based work only. That's right. Something I want to point out is, you know, is all of us, but I'll focus on you because today's your day or the, this is Father's Day. All of you are people that were touched by this and, and were, it was like, and you, you couldn't not advocate. You didn't have a PhD in your background, I assume. You didn't have, you, you didn't come into this as a profession you came to into this because it touched you personally. And you, and I would say that to everybody out there is become an advocate of some sort, be part of the solution. Um, you know, if you have the education behind you, become a family mediator, you know, become a, a guardian ad litem, um, do whatever you can to make a difference in this work and be part of the good guy team. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's see here. So, um, Bill, what's going on? I know you said you've got a couple of you're you're leading a couple of groups in two provinces in Canada. How yeah. has how have things changed from uh, the beginning of your work to now? And so it's this not is, but this is why in the UK we have something called a fact finding. OK, so any um, allegations of abuse um, will be investigated. But unfortunately, um they try to discourage it okay most of the cases because they know as soon as they do that well the, the court case is going to be very short so if they if they find out that the allegations are true or false or whatever it may be it's done they can't string it on but if they if they say well actually we won't have a fact finding what we'll do is we'll just get all these other agencies to make the reports and then we'll, we'll say, oh, it takes three months for this agency, three months for that agency, three months. And now you've gone a year without seeing your children. Right, okay. Right. And then by the time they've come back, they'll say, yeah, we better do a fact finding now. So it takes another six months or, and it's gone into two years now. And then they're like, oh, well, we're, we're going to conclude this now. We'll have the final hearing. Now it's taken two years and you've probably not seen your children in two years. Right. Now it's we'll lift the restraining order. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, exactly. Yeah. It's, just, it's just ludicrous. So in the state of Florida, um, we have, uh, so if you do have a, a couple that's choosing to, to split and they're trying to do it amicably, you know, there's a lot of distrust in, in the midst of like divorce, especially when there's children and assets involved. There's, oh my God, you know, am I going to, um, they're going to, there's just so much um, fear around it. However, in the state of Florida, an attorney, a, a couple can't go in and say, hey, attorney, I want you to figure out our divorce and we want you to be V1 attorney. The attorney, the rule in the state of Florida is I've got to represent one against the other. In and court, I, though. In court. In court. You can have an attorney advise you outside the outside exactly yeah but what but the the attorney, attorney. of record in court has yes. to choose a side against a side so yeah. there you, again you're you're fur further perpetuating that that um battle mentality that battle yeah. that's that's that that war mentality now i do know that you know there's mediation centered uh divorce and um you know and separation um, which is the closest to, and especially since if, an, if a mediator is an attorney, that at least gives you a little bit of like legal distinctions, but still um, they've just definitely set it up where, you know, unless you want to end up on the losing end, you better hire yourself a, a big badass attorney that's, um, yeah, yeah. you know, um, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. And it doesn't have to be that way. Absolutely. It, it's terrifying. It's terrifying for anyone that hasn't been into a family court situation. Um, I always, that, that is why I exist. And, and so many of your organizations exist because we don't want them to go through what we went through. Right. That's, right. That's why I do what I do because I wouldn't wish my worst enemy 
to ever go through what I went through. And that's Including why our... we have to do better. And we will do better. That's here, right. Here. Including our kids and their kids. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is a intergenerational Generational thing. This go, yeah. this can go on forever. Yes. You know, uh, oh, and here's one. Somebody says, um, the choice between bankruptcy and our children is a horrible choice. Choice. Yes. Absolutely. And uh, so many people have, unfortunately, whoever's gone through the family court system, or especially divorce, someone always loses out. Gary. Guaranteed. Financially, yeah. someone always loses out. So we need to stop taking the bait. You know, and I get that there's emotions involved. I, I get that there's betrayal involved. There's there's so many, um, you know, feelings swirling around that relationship. And, um, you know, unfortunately, pa parent, a parent will take the the weapon that they have at their disposal that that uh, stabs the knife deeper. And that's sadly the children. Yeah. Um, and, it and, and it's just also, like when, when you said about the Angelina Jolie case, mm -hmm. um, that is a worldwide thing. It goes everywhere. Everyone's following that. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, it should have never got to that stage. Now, mm -hmm. if you look at Angelina Jolie's history, OK, and how she got to where she, she, she is in this sort of celebrity lifestyle, she's a very troubled woman. Mm -hmm. OK, very troubled woman. She's had a lot of trauma in her life. Now, whether or not that's been dealt with, I don't know. I don't know her personally. But one thing I can say is it's led to this situation that they're in. If you look at the, the conflict, the, the terms that she uses in terms to try and get control over a situation, that should be quite simple. We had a separation. You both adopted these kids. You both are the parents to these children. You both spend time with the children. That's it. That's how it should end. But unfortunately, because of all her trauma and everything she's been through, she's created a conflicted situation, which doesn't need to be there. And this is why, like Bill says, there is no one trained in the court process or legal professionals that can diagnose these issues. And that's why they need to stay out of court. I mean, and, and I'll tell you, if you take a, if you set aside, this person is evil, this person's narcissist, this let's, let's, let's take away the labels and take away the resignation. And we, and, and there was a time when you didn't see this person as evil and stuff. And I get that some people are just really good at battle, you know, battle mode. Um, that doesn't serve anybody. So when we set that aside, what can we do? Um, we can we can fight for the rights of the children. Truly, we're you know that's the goal is um, being the advocate for the children, and the children having a, being whole and complete, so that they're not going to pass along this generational trauma. And you're right, Angelina Julie, she. Had, there is a history. She did not have a good relationship with her mother that validated her. And it, it, it's, we're not going to call Angelina evil. She may be doing evil things in our opinion, but she, that being said, she's a product of her environment, a product of her childhood. But uh, and which is one of the reasons that we, uh, along with Todd on the team uh, with Kids Need Both, we've created this platform. And I and I definitely want um, uh, Bill and Mark for you guys to be plugged into this uh, um, community called Hope for Families. Um, and we're creating a movement. We are creating a movement to shift the conversation and bring healing to hurting families. 100%, 100%. Uh, Anything to help our children, I am there. Yeah, yeah. we have, um, Todd, I don't know if you want to say something about the, 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 um, the, I say it's a platform, but it's really a community. It's really a movement. Um, we've been working with programmers for a year now to develop a learning management system for um, those of you professionals who've created courses uh, also these, um, those of you professionals or, you know, not just the professionals, the advocates that are leading 
uh, live programs and live uh, live groups to make a difference. And um, we're trying to also be the one that promotes all of your events out into the other social media platforms so that um, we all can win. Yeah, thank you. One thing that's kind of, uh, I think, unique about, I think we our thinking about the platform ha has evolved over the past year is the idea that, well, uh, you know, many of us, like Mark, you'd mentioned, and I totally agree with you that, uh, you know, the solutions have to be outside the, the current system, you know, the, the adversarial system. Um, you know, trying to change that is a yeoman's job. Um, you know, what can we do outside the system? Um, the uh, professionals on the platform and that we're, um, that we're interacting with are both, you know, are playing, you know, some are, uh, are, are like-minded in that sense. Others are, you know, trying to uh, improve things within the court system. I mean, it's not exclusive in that sense, but um, by seeing what works and what doesn't work and by getting case studies of, you know, positive results coming from, you know, uh, the use of cooperative techniques instead of the combative methods Correct. like false allegation restraining orders is one of them and child support and uh, unequal parenting. I mean, those are the three, you know, some of the big uh, techniques that are used in adversarial court uh, or a family court, um, you know, we'll, uh, you know, we'll be, as, as, as Danica says, it's a movement, you know, and that's yep. part of, not everybody's going to be on the same page. It's like, like you were saying, Bill, you know, even with parental alienation, you know, we're at each at different stages. Some of us have yeah. adult children that are, you know, some of us have, you know, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, and, and it's a, it, you know, it's the same thing, but we're at different stages. And I think that uh, a lot of the professionals in this industry, uh, in and around this industry, you know, some are, are leading, are, you know, at the forefront of the movement and others, you know, still need proof, you know, or whatever, you know, they, they, they're, they're uh, interested, um, but are not completely, uh, you know, bought off on it. And so it's a, it's an open platform. And I think that's yeah. important. I, the, the goal is, is we all, we all can do something. We all can do something to make a difference. And I get that there's a lot of um, advocates who were, you know, really uh, putting everything, their money, their time, their everything into this movement. And, um, and our goal is you shouldn't be poor, you shouldn't grow, get, go broke doing the right thing. Right. Um, to try to make a difference for families and stuff like that. Not that it's not a platform. Obviously, it's not a platform to make all these professionals wealthy. That's not the agenda. The agenda is let's work smarter by uniting together. 100%. Well, this is, this is well, like you mentioned, with regards to healing. Um, that's why I'm also doing retreats. I do believe that healing is a, a massive process and part of what we're trying to achieve. It's not just about dealing with things on your own, but having the right support um, and, and finding the right healing process uh, around what we're trying to achieve as well. That's right. Well, it is three minutes after the hour. I know that I'm sure, I don't know what time it is over in the UK, but I know it's not this time. <laughs> and I thank you for whatever it took for you to get here on Father's Day.